I mean, whether it's business or sports, if you don't sacrifice for your dream, if you don't sacrifice for what you want, then you're not going to get it. Welcome to Business Outlaws. Here we make you a fly on the wall for some of the most influential entrepreneurs in the biz. I'm here with Big Mike, owner yeah. and founder of Advanced Nutrients and Big Mike's Blends. That's right. Big Mike's Blends. It's like a Dr. Seuss riddle. <laughs> and I'm here with Chris Collins, founder and owner of Syndicate X. Yes. I love yes. saying that. X, X, X. And today we have Kyle Turley, NFL veteran lineman for over a decade. What exactly is a lineman? I don't do football, so... Typical Dallas Cowboys. He was fan. offensive yeah. lines. He's I like it because of the line uniforms. The guys you never hear about. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, here you are. We don't touch the ball. We're not supposed to. So we just do all. We throw people around so those guys that touch the ball can score points. You're like bodyguards. Yeah. Pretty they, much. They are. Yeah. They, they are the quarterback. <laughs> Absolutely. They do. That's right. Yeah. We're the we're the guardians of the galaxy. So oh. Oh, uh, the like NFL that. galaxy. Yeah, they fail to remember that sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> so the the Ooh, purpose what? of this podcast, Kyle. Oh, you interrupted the lady. <laughs> Princess Jamie Fox. <laughs> yes. TV host extraordinaire. And beautiful follower on Instagram. Jamie Fox. Oh. So the purpose, Kyle, of this you podcast see. is yes. Mike and I had the idea a while ago of doing a podcast where we send the elevator back down, kind of speaking to the 24-year-old us about, you know, what are the things, if you could go back in time and tell yourself, like, hey, this is how it really works. Everybody's <laughs> going to tell you this. We all wish we could do that. Yeah. yeah. That'd be great. But we're going to do it and for them. so that really yeah. is the spirit of this. Yep. So we get candid. We try to keep it um, as unfiltered and as honest as possible. It also is the only podcast with a bud tender. So Mike has a bud tender. Yep. And Excellent. a bartender. I'm very proud of our crowd here that they are ordering drinks. I'm winning this, Mike. More people are ordering drinks than are using the bud tender. Well, we'll change that real well, quick Well, <laughs> because I just want to say that last time, one of the females got real cocky and was like, oh my God, I smoke weed all the time. And she took a bong hit and fucking passed out almost and left. She got so <laughs> sick. She got so I sick. I tell people the weed that Mike uh, is smoking is probably not yeah. the weed that you're uh, hey, Yeah, but it, it, look, <laughs> it was just a bong hit. It wasn't even a dab. Imagine we gave her a dab. Wow. Jeez, yeah, that's, that's what right? you get for and, being. And we and we asked her. I asked her. I go, hey, have you like what's your relationship with cannabis? I asked it. She's, oh yeah, I smoke, I smoke all the time. She okay, said. I thought bong would be safe. Apparently not. <laughs> Mike's single, so I think it had more to do with that than he loves blondes. He loves are you, blondes. Are you single? No, I'm not. No, I'm married 15 years, uh, two beautiful kids, uh, the whole deal, man. Yeah. I do want to talk before we start that. I do want to talk about the bartender because she's different <laughs> today. It's not Cody. Yeah, what the hell's Cody? Hey, J Jillian. You're wonderful. Jillian, you're right? wonderful. But you're Jillian. just a new face. Hi. Hi. New face, Hi, new boobs around you? here. You know what I mean? New face, Thank new boobs. Thank you for the water. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So what relationship advice would you give the 24-year-old us? Oh, wow. Um, I mean, being married that long yeah. and having kids, you, you must have some sort of system for that. Uh, stay away from Asian massage parlors. Oh, boy. Um, <laughs> you writing this down, Mike? Gateway. Mike needs a pen. I, I am. Uh, I need some advice. Listen, I was, did you say uh, gay porn? The longest Gateway. relationship in 10 years. <laughs> um, and uh, just be honest, man. At the end of the day, uh, you know, this life sh should be about honesty, period. And in that situation, <laughs> you start lying for one second. Uh, as oh, yeah. my great football coach, Herm Edwards, said, what, what happens in the dark comes to the light. And Ooh. it does. So, oh, that's you know, deep. You know, like that. that's the advice I would give a younger myself. And have kids sooner. It grounds you unbelievably. <laughs> well, well, how did you change when you had kids? Uh, I had responsibilities, real responsibilities. You know, before you have kids, you don't have responsibilities. <laughs> Michael, did you change when you had a kid? Oh, absolutely. Like, Same thing. Yeah, because you're looking. It's a mini version of you. It's the coolest thing. And it, it just, that's it. The whole, the whole thing changed. In fact, it changed so much. I actually called my mother up and I, and I thanked her for taking care of me <laughs> because I had no concept of how much oh, work wow. goes into the child. And it, it was, uh, yeah, I called her and said, you know what? I got to give you props, mom. You yeah, did a great job. Thanks. And yeah. you had a sure. girl, which is. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> 
That's yeah. a, no, it's a whole nother story. It is. Isn't it? <laughs> so it just hits yes, you. Just, you're oh, you're totally. kind of famous yeah. for one thing, and do you hate being well, famous for well, that? Well, hang on, Well, not for one thing. He's multiple things. But <laughs> he's really famous he's for one thing. Well, okay, much, there you go. It's one thing to say. It's not an insult. Like no. he's really famous for one thing, and and it's a cool thing. It is. Like I I see that thing different than I think most did. Like I saw he had his guys back. What defender like, of the galaxy? Remember? Yeah, that was like my job. so somebody yeah. somebody um was yanking at your quarterback's helmet, right? Trying to twist his head off is what yeah. it sound, sounded like uh, and, with the noise he, he let out. And like any good hockey player, you came in to right. his defense. Exactly. What do they call a guy in hockey? The, Enforcer. The, the fight? Enforcer. Yeah. That's right. And so it's our you, job. you came in and um, you won that discussion in the end. Like you came out. Yeah. I guess. Ahead? I don't know. Cost my team an extra five, ten yard penalty. Moved us back a little extra far than uh, we were about to score. So, you know, we lost the game. If we would have won the game, I'd have been the hero. But because we lost, I was the goat. The previous. Really? Oh yeah, yeah, kind of. You know, for a lot of people like yourself, that's the the, the line in the sand, I guess, if you will, um, as far as how people perceived that moment in my sports career. Um, what exactly did you do? Uh, well, uh, a, a, a person on the field was trying to hurt one of my players, so I uh, got revenge. Um, you know, I mean, and, it's there's a <laughs> no justice. I need yeah. details. So don't just. Well, he was got trying me. to rip his head off, off, as he was mentioning, and mm. so you can watch the, it's on YouTube, and um, uh, so I tried to rip his head off, and so but I came out with his helmet. His head wasn't in it, unfortunately, <laughs> and um, or fortunately nowadays I wouldn't do that, but. Um, right. <laughs> and uh, tried to throw the helmet down the 50 yard line so he'd at least have to go walk his ass down there and get it. But, um, you know, this I got, I got kicked were, out. When you so. were with the Saints, right? Yes. That's amazing. So after that happens, you know, in hindsight, and giving somebody younger advice about those moments where everything's kind of closing in on you because you had to feel a lot of pressure at that moment, right? Sure. All of a sudden, overnight, you're on Sports Center and mm -hmm. everywhere, and it's going viral. Yeah. What did you feel in What did you feel in that moment? And then, what would you tell yourself now, looking back? You know, when you're faced with those fight or flight situations, it's kind of like you're faced with these doors, and you just go through. You choose a door to go through. That's kind of how it was presented to me in in the moment, as I recall. Um, and I went through the door I went through, <laughs> you know, where you keep going. Um, and today, I guess, um, uh, and in some ways, there's not a lot of control involved in that to what I understand today and, and how things work with our brains. Um, and so today, explain that a little bit. Well, and, and getting to what I would uh, suggest to a 24 year old young man today is that you need to understand cannabis because what I understand about cannabis today could have helped that young man back then save a lot of struggles and problems and issues that were starting to arise that we know now have to do with what we're doing to our brains playing these sports. Which is uh, CTE, Exactly, right? creating right. a disease that uh, uh, <laughs> takes control of your brain and the, you know, certain areas that deal with uh, a lot of decision-making. And uh, whether it's being playing football or what we've discovered is whether you're playing football or you've been in a car accident or you had an abusive parent as a child even, uh, these issues and problems that these doctors are addressing with all these opiates and, you know, psych medications uh, could be very much taken care of with cannabis. And um, I was given opiates. I was given a lot of pills back what, in the day. What kind of opiates did they give you? Well, when I played, it was still just a free-for-all, really. It was kind of at the pinnacle of it. You know, okay. uh, we still was a few years in probably, I mean, I, at one point I purchased 10,000 Vicodin. Woo! Yeah. I Why mean, not? through a buddy, that, uh, because he yeah, had a doctor buddy that sure. was selling them. And yeah. I said, well, I'm going to need those the rest of my life. So let me stock okay. up right now. So, so here and you I got are. a lot of buddies that say they want them. And so, I mean, these were running around NFL locker rooms like oh, crazy. Sure. You know? So at what point Little did you cannabis. say, this is, cr this is insane. I want to try something else. And cannabis came into your life. Do you remember when that was? And how that um, cannabis was introduced to me by another player at a point in my life where I really needed it. Was going through a divorce at the time, had mm -hmm. off field issues, on field issues, trying to cope with the game, a lot of pressures. I was a first round draft pick, lots of money, millions of dollars, you know, all this pressure. And, um, uh, 
going through that moment where I had some off field issues in the way as well, uh, really kind of maxed out, um, what was going on with me. So I wasn't anxiety. sleeping. I wasn't yeah. eating right, you know, and I was offensive lineman in the National Football League. So, you know, you need to carry this size and this strength and this vigor. And it was just going downhill. And he said, here, Kyle, you need to take this. And I said, well, I can't, I don't want to test positive for this. I had not used marijuana in my entire life, uh, up until that point. I was 22 what, what years old. What year was that? I was my second year in the NFL. So okay. I was about 22, 23. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then he explained the NFL drug policy, uh, and how they, they operate testing and, uh, basically only test once a year. And if you pass that test then you're good for a whole year, unless you get in trouble, you get arrested, pulled over and whatnot. Um, and so once I understood that, then I, just, I said, okay, well, let me try it because I wasn't sleeping. I wasn't eating. They were prescribing me all these pills to do that. Their, uh, Ambien came on the scene right around then. They're like, you got to try this new drug, Ambien, you know, you got to try this new drug, Somas, uh, you know, all these muscle relaxers and sleep aids and yeah. all this stuff started getting thrown around. And, and this guy saw that and, uh, he's a Hall of Fame, uh, NFL offensive lineman himself. And he said, Kyle, you need to smoke some weed. And I said, well, I don't have any and I don't, you know, uh, I've already taken the test. Okay. So I won't test positive. I won't get tested again. Uh, cleared that info and then uh, I, I used it for the first time and uh, from that first moment of using marijuana I knew that this was something that could help me uh, because I got a great night's sleep I cleared my mind I didn't sit and dwell on all the things that were just closing in on my life and all the things that were going on from family issues and all that you know um, to the game itself um, and what I know about it today if I could take that back to that 24 year old kid I'd probably just be retiring at 40 with Tom Brady. <laughs> what, yeah. what percentage of, of NFL athletes now use some form of cannabis? I mean, when I was in the game, it was a lot. I would have yeah. said over 50%, even coaches. I mean, we had coaches that would, you know, stop by those houses and people that they knew were getting together to, you know, um, you know, Medicaid. And, and that's the way I see it. You know, that's the way I always saw it um, as a medicine person, as the way it was introduced to me. And so I think more players today are doing it than they were even because of the obvious, you know, millions of Americans are experiencing medicinal benefits from this and with our community um, and all the injuries that are had playing oh, yeah. these sports. I mean, you know, it's either you're going to take this a cocktail of pills or you're going to just, you know, burn one down and everything's fine. And I, I think that's kind of a no brainer decision. So what are some of your favorite strains to relieve pain for NFL players are using? Do they, do they migrate to certain strains or what do you find? Um, I don't know. I think uh, I've found universal strains in, in our community. I yep. think that certain personalities, um, uh, you know, kind of, uh, warrant certain strains. Yes, they do. Um, the sativas go and work towards individuals that have these, uh, you know, alpha male men personalities. I, I, I've given uh, the strains that work for me, Jack Herrera's, these sativa hybrids, yeah, SJ13, Hazes, uh, Blue Dream, all yep. these, the Hazes, all those families, um, Dutch Treat, these things. <laughs> well, I'm a Haze guy. I love Haze. Right. Like, right. Yeah. Well, you're and, an, and, and you're an like, alpha. And I like, apparently so, because I like, I like a lot of sativa. In fact, uh, this is what this is. This is exactly. A, and it helps you function. You it know? does. So, um, you know, this whole myth about uh, whether there's high THC levels in this, you know, that person that came here and smoked and they hit the floor, it's because they, they used <laughs> they the wrong the strain. Oh, yeah. They used well. the wrong strain. And I've found uh, in giving other individuals I see that are much like myself, those same strains work for them. So uh, I've been trying to really put that out there and, and letting a lot of football players know mm -hmm. to go towards the sativa strains myself, because sure. uh, I believe that that is more of an alpha male kind of strain. Mm -hmm. You know, people that are uh, really sedated already and just these mild you know, personalities, I think probably those Indicas and all these people that have these great experiences with all the cushions and that whole thing, uh, uh, you know, that works for them. That's great. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you're a high functioning person, someone who likes to get shit done and and has project after project and, you know, wife and kids and school and PTA and baseball, <laughs> all these things, you can't afford to be sitting on the couch and uh, in searching all these strains. I've found unbelievable strains with the sativas for oh, sure. Yeah. And for, for a lot of times, people for pain will go towards the purple strains, like Granddaddy Purple. Mm -hmm. And you know, they want to take that towards bedtime as, yeah. as well, but they well, work really well for pain. Really. For me, it's about the mind. 
Um, and how this interacts with your mind. Pain is pain. And it's not about, there's no painkiller. There's no painkiller clinic out there. Uh, you know, that's why you can get up to 30 Vicodin a day. Some of my buddies have been, ta- you know, wow. doing, they're still doing that. Like 10, four, 10 to 20 Vicodin a day is insane. Huh. And, so wait, what's uh, that? What, is the, what is the NFL stance right now on cannabis? Because they're still using opioids and, mm-hmm. and all this other stuff. Like, so what's going on? Uh, you know, they just taken a very passive stance. They've at least this uh, year or last year uh, offered their assistance to the Players Association, our union, um, because they said they started a cannabis committee and they really mm-hmm. didn't. Because uh, I've not been contacted or anybody that I know has been contacted um, by this supposed cannabis committee that's supposed mm-hmm. to be, um, you know, I guess testing the efficacy or looking into it. And that's all I really keep saying is that we're looking into it. We've got our doctors. Um, and those are the doctors that, you know, prescribed all of us these opiates. And so I think, you know, they're going to run from it as long as they can. Uh, I'm trying right now to get them to at least meet IOC standards. Uh, right. right now they're at 35 nanograms of THC in your system. Um, to test positive for marijuana on an NFL drug test. It mm-hmm. used to be 15.2. I talked to Ricky Williams and I asked him because I've been uh, really trying to find a way to make this make sense to the NFL of how they can do this. And I think I've got it with the IOC and the, the IOC raised theirs to 150 nanograms. Uh, ironically, after extreme sports became <laughs> their number one draw uh, yeah. and these guys could give a shit about money, they need their weed. And, uh, you know, all these guys are doing all these crazy things because because their minds are clear and they can focus and they can, mm-hmm. uh, you know, focus on what they're supposed to do. And that's why you see all these amazing tricks. All these people would not believe that uh, these Olympic athletes oh, are uh, are supposedly high uh, on marijuana and doing these things. And anyway, so if we can meet the IOC standard of 150 nanograms, which means pretty much you can smoke weed all day. You know, that's what because Ricky told me he tested positive at 18 nanograms when the Dolphins tested him when he got kicked yep. out of the league. And it was 15.2 at that time. They've risen it to 35. Um, I think Major League Baseball is even higher than that. NHL's uh, higher than that, which is so there's this real stupid you know, discrepancy between uh, positive sports. tests yeah. and sports. And I think that the, the IOC addressed it and every sport should meet that standard of 150 nanograms. I agree. And leave it at that until the federal government uh, does what they should do, and that's allow stop testing. Period. You know. So you're really, really deep into this culture. In fact, so much so that you have your own brand of the yeah. CBD products. Yeah. Tell us about those. Like, when did you start that? Why did you decide to do it? And um, how's because, it being received? Well, CBD for me, what I found in CBD was dealing with the pain. Yeah. Uh, when I started taking CBD every day. You know, certain strains deal with pain. Um, but as I said, it's more about the brain for me. And so if I can control my mind and have that, um, I mean, I, I've been through pain. I've had my foot twisted around backwards. I broke it back in place, you know, lethal weapon style. I'm going to take one of these. I, I've blown my knee out and had my knee blown out, you know, and tough through lots of crazy things, you know, been in games where you've had dislocations of fingers and joints and just put them back in place and go. So I've wow. got, I've got a high pain tolerance. So if I can get my mind right, then I can deal with all this pain. That's not a big deal. But what I found about CBD is that that deals with pain. CBD, yep. if you take it every day, uh, unbelievable with pain management. I mean, let alone what it does for you with anxiety well, and stress. Those are delicious too. Thank Kyle, you. Kyle, yeah, let me, Thank so you. Big Mike just ate one of the Neuro XF, XPF, mm-hmm. Extreme Performance Fuel CBD gummies. So tell me about this. Like, I obviously don't eat a lot of CBD. If I ate one of these, now they're 25 milligrams, what would happen? Nothing. Nothing. Yeah. yeah. It's pure hemp. Try it. It's pure what? Pure hemp, pure hemp derived, Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and and there's a big discussion about that out right now. Hemp uh, CBD versus full plant CBD and everybody's got their preference. But at the end of the day, if you're a strains person and you Mm -hmm. understand your strains, um, I don't I don't really like because I've tried. I've got a bunch of people that give me products like you guys all the time to try. Mm -hmm. And so I do. And some of those full extracts come from individual plants. Um, And so you have these. Um, hallmarks of these strains within those tinctures. Yeah. And I've found an unbelievable balance uh, and ability to use CBD without interference with my strains right. through hemp derived CBD. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's not a sales pitch or bullshit. Yep. Um, it, it's very real. And uh, so we work with uh, some of the best producers in the business in Colorado. Uh, we've got dedicated farms, um, you know, American source, American made, hemp derived, which is the 100% uh, legal opportunity. And, and by the way, let's go. Yeah. Back. You said American-made, American-grown. That's important That's right. because a lot of CBD 
comes out of China, mm-hmm. and I have a lot of a personal, you know, relationship <clears throat> with China over the years. Mm-hmm. And let me tell you, I don't trust it. I wouldn't trust my CBD coming out of China I, because I I know. Yeah, you have to watch it very carefully. That's well, all for say. sure, yeah. for sure, and 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 that's at the end of the day, we want to have transparency. I'm trying to create a product uh, yep. brand that goes into sports. You know, if I'm trying to give, it, I'm trying to give this to kids, literally, right. because of the neuroprotective aspects, the ability to keep. The, they're they're prescribing oxycotton to 11 year olds. The reason why they did that Jesus. is because of sports. Period. Because you have these serious injuries that occur, and the majority of those happen in sports, and these kids go to the doctors. And, so uh, we get this straight. Yeah. Eleven year old kid mm-hmm. gets injured in basketball or the football field. They go to a doctor and they're giving them heroin. Yeah, yeah. oxycontin. Oh, yeah, yeah, literally Opioids. prescription for heroin. Yeah, um, that's, and, that's and that was that was a case. They fought to get that done, and then the federal government allowed them to. They won the case against, uh, I guess, mm-hmm. opposition that you shouldn't give uh, these you know harmful opiates to kids <laughs> and I, they I went agree. and said you know what well we can because we're going to put a bunch of money behind it we're going to win a lawsuit against you and they did and so now they can and so um do the parents have any say in that in what in like you can say no right if you're a parent well sure you can say no yeah. i don't want my son or daughter to take this but how many parents are doing that in america when a doctor that's got a degree on his wall from harvard well, it, says they should you know they but, should take this um well, oxycontin, yeah. it's like know? that with a lot of stuff well though. you have to put your and, own and here's some they should, they, they should be, yeah they should be yeah they should yeah. be trying different things for sure and, and doing that like i'll tell you i've had three surgeries where they've had to cut me open mm-hmm. and every single time they gave me the opioids and i said nope not going to take them. The doctor looked at me. What are you going to do? I go, hey, I'm a cannabis guy. That's right. I'm going to do it with CBD and THC and some strains. And they're just amazing. And then there mm-hmm. always is a conversation afterwards. Tell me more about this. Yeah. How does this work? And yeah. well, I'd like to try some. Can you get some into my office? And what are mm-hmm. the laws? Because they see that it, it works so well. Oh, yeah. what, I, what I meant with this, not like how does it make me feel like I'm going to get fucked up. But I'm saying, what is... <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm not going to be like, I got oh, you. Sure. I mean, what is it, the purpose of this gummy for someone who is learning about this and CBD? Well, CBD is an unbelievable uh, component of the cannabis plant. And you can get that from marijuana or hemp. And and it is the same in that it speaks to your cannabinoid system. And so if you understand the importance of your cannabinoid system, how it works in your body, um, CBD daily can help to turn that on in a non-psychoactive way that allows you to have those benefits. Um, And those, you know, directly relate to your immune system, your central nervous system. So if you um, have high anxiety, Anxiety, stress. If you get episodes of vertigo, I don't have vertigo anymore. I was having vertigo constantly because of concussions, oh, wow. and I don't have that anymore. W- weren't and you having seizures too? I had. I've had seizures. I've been hospitalized in and out. And uh, now all that stops. Gone. gone. And as soon as I stopped taking the opiates about four years ago or more now, um, and just when I found these certain strains of marijuana that I knew I could get off all those pills with, and then just kept searching, then found better strains, uh, and then found CBD. Um, unbelievable in how that addresses, I don't even have a fear of vertigo anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, I was being prescribed all these other pills to deal with that stuff and it kind of kept it away. Um, but never did fully. And Mm -hmm. so I'd have these episodes where I, I would go in full vertigo where I'm just vomiting everywhere. I'd go into a seizure because of that. Yeah. So it, it was very real, but I have not had any of those problems, not one, uh, since I, uh, freed myself from all those opiates hundred percent. And that was probably about 10 pills a day. Um, wow. you know, from painkillers to muscle relaxers to just your everyday aspirins and the leaves that we're just passing around. And, um, you know, now you also started an organization called uh, Gridiron greats that, uh, mm-hmm. helps, uh, yeah. athletes with uh, an alternative, right? Well, they've allowed me. The Gridiron Grace is a group that started in 2006 uh, with Mike Ditka, um, Jerry Kramer, Gail Sayers, a bunch of Hall yeah, of Fame. I, I lived in Chicago players. in 85, and the 85 Bears of Ditka was <laughs> That's amazing. That's right. Yeah. yeah, and Ditka drafted me uh, to the Oh, Saints. really? That's right. Yeah. He was he drafted me down in New Orleans. Wow. Um, so Ditka was a great uh, friend. Um, you know, I was his guy, so I always stayed close to him. And then all these discussions about um, our retired community it was being treated very poorly, uh, being completely ignored, disabilities not honored. Uh, guys were having very, very tough times um, in, in 
finding medical care. When you leave the NFL, you'd think that you'd have medical insurance the rest of your life because you made it to that high level. You don't. They take everything from you. So you're out into the world now with uh, this broken body and mind and trying to, you know, assimilate into this society that, you know, has no work ethic, really has no drive, has no determination, doesn't have any of the things you associated with every day of your life playing sports organized sports and especially football, much like the military and why you see the PTSD cases anyway. So I got involved with Mike Ditka um, and we started that group, the Gridiron Greats, over 10 years now in existence or more. Um, and we have tremendous events. We're having one in Vegas on the 25th coming up here. You know, we're into thousands of people now and uh, just a, a great organization that gives back to our community. Um, you know, too many groups raise money for Causes, great causes for kids and cancer and all this and that. But we have a real growing problem in our community um, that is still not being addressed today with, you know, not the, the non-admission of that this causes brain injury, the non-admission that cannabis uh, helps to resolve that and can help people get off pills. They're still prescribing. Well, we're not prescribing them on the levels we used to. It only takes one asshole. And that's the truth of it, you know? I think I think it's funny that the idea of my question to you about coming off the field and you just did that. The coach does the coach yell at you after the helmet thing? Yeah, uh, yeah. Everybody was yelling at me. You, uh, your yeah, advice what are you doing? To smoke weed. <laughs> Calm be, down. If yeah, I smoked you weed, I'd be in the one? shower eating no, Doritos. I'm good, man. Thank you. That smells good. What is that? J1. Yeah, different. Yeah, you know. Uh, um, it's, but it's, it's in the right context. It's, it's understanding. You know, I've, I said it on an ESPN radio. Uh, they asked me, what would you tell a young man today about going into the game of football? What should he do? I said, he should take CBD every day, understand what the differences are in strains of cannabis, uh, listen to Slayer and go try to run through everybody on every play. At the end of the day, that's the game of football. And, uh, I know what I've found in how this helps me deal with my mind, um, and making decisions. Now that I've found all those things, now that I've found these strains, I've found CBD uh, and, and use it and have found ways that it really works. I think if I could take that back to where I was 24 years old, um, I mean, again, I, I've already smoked like four joints today. I mean, I, I'm, I'm <laughs> unbelievably functional. I could go right. control a board He's meeting right room, you, you know, a there board room. Go. I could go to a, a, an NFL team and, and learn an entire offense. I could go out and golf. I could do all these things because I know what I've found in these strains, and it makes me better. You so just have found it. You mentioned Slayer. Yeah. You are a musician as well. Bass, yeah. guitar, and... Uh, yeah, I play it all. I yeah. play drums, play a little piano, bass, guitar, really? sing. What's your little favorite? flute. Yeah, I've never, no, you know, the recorder, I guess, in school with, uh, that was it. That was your first day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So how's that going for you? Uh, that's just a hobby. That's, yeah. a, you know, passion. You know, I've always played music. Well, you um, play death metal. Like, I, I, why, play why country. Death I play metal. country. I play death, uh, doom metal, uh, death wow. metal. I was in a death metal band in Arizona called Perpetual Death Mode. <laughs> um, I was in, uh, my country band, the Turley yeah. thing. I did, uh, I, uh, Toured with everybody from Hank Three to David Allen Coe and George right. Jones and the Skinner and all these guys, Eric Church. Um, wow. I, I toured the country for like five years out of Nashville playing music. Um, That's and cool. uh, then I had a doom metal band. We toured with Crowbar and played with, you know, awesome metal bands like wow. that and um, played on the strip here a bunch uh, when we moved the project back out here. But, you know, just family, kids, everything, music's yep. the, you know, I know the greatest bands in the world and they're all struggling. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so yeah. um, it's not a fruitful business, and if you want to make it, you got to be on the road. And, yes, you do. You know, and I, you're tattooed. How many tattoos you got? Um, <laughs> my mom says too many, but um, you know, I have all. plenty more to come. <laughs> you know, um, but they're all meaningful. They all have great meaning. I and can that, relate that's to my that. Stuff. Yeah, I get that. You know, yeah, so yeah. when something strikes me, I go to the tattoo shop. But yeah. so sometimes it's taken longer to to get tattoos. I need to catch up. <laughs> What's your favorite tattoo? My favorite tattoo? God, I don't even know if I have a favorite tattoo. I saw tattoo. that New Orleans sink getting removed on your ring know. finger. Yeah, yeah. I got, no, that's just a shitty tattoo. Oh, uh, just fell late out. night, my wife and I, hers is way worse. Uh, one of our anniversaries. <laughs> Let's go get our finger tattooed. Um, and, uh, but, uh, you know, I got my daughter's name here. Uh, I need to get my other two kids' names on me here soon. <laughs> my wife's name is all down jealous? my side. Yeah, no. They They're don't eight, need, nine, and seven, you said, right? Yeah. yeah. Your wife's name exactly. on your side. 
Mike. Yeah. That's right. Hey, man. Kiss of death. Ask Mike hey. how many tattoos uh, he has. It's uh, zero. Zero. I, I, he has my name I, on his head. Number two has been uh, amazing, and uh, I, 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 I wish it was she was number one because I never would have went anywhere else. What are the commonalities between the players that really perform at a high level and the ones that kind of come and go in the NFL? Like, what things did you learn at an early age watching? players that stayed and ones that um didn't they got cut when maybe Mm -hmm. they had all the talent in the world but they just couldn't harness it or put it out there the right way Mm, i don't know i mean the game of football i mean it's just it's performance based you know so uh, the guys that fall off are just guys that aren't focused or have other things that you know interfere from injuries that's the number one factor you know to off the field problems and issues um that can get in the way you know i mean you got all these great players and that's the thing and why i talk about cannabis so much with why it should be in sports because you have great careers and that should last a lot longer um but yet you have these incidents of things that happen where these these guys are, uh, you know, domestic violence to drunk driving and all these other things that you could eliminate 100 percent with cannabis and understanding it. Um, and uh, that's really the factor, you know, because once you make it to the NFL, it's the elite of the elite. You know, everybody's uh, a baller, you know, when they get to choose uh, at, on draft day. Each team only gets seven guys out of the thousands of college football players in America that are trying to play in the NFL, let alone uh, guys from overseas. I mean, a guy got drafted this year off of uh, just being a freak of nature athletically and size wise uh, out of Australia that never played football because he was a rugby player, you know. So out of the search of the world for the greatest players in the world, that's what the NFL is. And so you've just got these uh, individuals, um, you know, that are there that are just machines. And so uh, how does that machine work best? And I think what gets in the way is. Um, uh, this brain disease for one, um, injury, you know, number two, so the brain disease from concussions or hitting stuff, hundred percent, you know, cause that can f- infiltrate into, in, you know, not just the injury side, but in how you deal with management and how you deal with, you know, the press and the media and, you know, all these other things. If, uh, you could have control of your mind and balance, then, uh, you'd make a lot better decisions. And when you have so much at stake, I mean, who's going to screw that up? So you're saying the commonality between the really good ones and the ones that get cut is that they need to smoke weed. Oh man, the commonality um, is, is is those factors. <laughs> He's trying to bring it back listed. around. Yeah. I know you're like know, Clinton I'm trying, here. Yeah. I'm trying. So to, they want you to talk about this, but yeah. back to the economy. Yeah. Back to the economy. Yeah. No, like I mean, I've we've hung out with a lot of athletes, and that is mm-hmm. the the answers are a little different. So sure, I get I get the weed thing. I get it, but like. You know, it's a mental thing, right? Mm-hmm. So, Oh, you can't handle it mentally. So it's, it's the guys that are balanced, like Tom Brady, that have a great balance. Uh, you know, these guys that uh, play discipline. forever. Isaac Bruce, all these other guys. Uh, what was that? Discipline. Discipline, of course. I mean, everybody's got discipline. That's what I'm saying. Uh, you know, once you get there, you've got this... Um, conglomerate of individuals that are the elite, uh, you know, most elite athletes in the world. And, sure, th- um, those guys are elite. But coming up to the ranks, where did you start? Like maybe... Uh, Middle school or something like this, seventh grade, sixth grade, you start um, playing football? No, actually, I, I didn't play football until I was a senior in high school. Okay, senior oh, in yeah. high school. Yeah. Really? And, and so here you are, you're, you're, you're seeing other seniors in high school, you're seeing college kids, and you keep climbing up the ladder and they don't. What did you do or people who do that climb that ladder and why are those people left behind? What don't, don't they understand about themselves or life? Or Well, that's easy. Oh. Um, I mean, from college to the pros, that's easy. And that's mm-hmm. just commitment. At the end of the day, I gave up spring breaks. I gave up uh, all these things. So sacrifice partying. is important. hundred percent. Right. I mean, whether it's business or sports, if you don't sacrifice for your dream, if you don't sacrifice for what you want, then you're not going to get it. Well, there's a lot of young entrepreneurs out there and they believe that there's an easy button to everything. <laughs> and obviously there's not. Yeah. So um, talk more about that. Well, like, that's the truth. I mean, know. I mean, and then when you get there uh, again, it's that commitment. But uh, my point to that is that you've got the elite and I think the commitment part gets uh, sidetracked. It gets, there's too many distractions that, that distract you away from your focus of that. You are one of the elite in the world. You sh- if you just stay focused, you're going to have a great career. And I think that in business as well, um, in entrepreneurship, uh, you have to have a focus. You have to have the right team. Obviously you can't just have that focus. I've had great focus and gone three and 13, you know, we won nothing. Um, uh, but as, as an individual, you know, and you want to achieve something, there's, you just can't quit. 
I mean, when I was a wrestler, what helped me become a great football player. Wait, just, wait, wait. You were a wrestler? That was what I did. Uh, high school wrestler, awesome. wrestling, right? In, in high, yeah, in high school. Well, started, Real wrestling. I started early. Not WWF shit. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I started early. Like, yeah, you're a Midwest guy. You know wrestling and that, how, how important that is. I mean, oh, it develops yeah. character, all these other things. I tell kids today, you better wrestle before you play football. You want to make it. I mean, some of the best pl- football players that have ever played, from Ray Lewis to uh, Lorenzo Neal to myself to all these wide receivers and other state champion wrestlers. Wrestlers, you know, wow. uh, the guys in the NFL all over the place, state champion wrestlers. And uh, in the wrestling room, we learned three D's. And that was dedication, determination, and desire. And I put that everywhere. I should have it tattooed. I mean, I don't know why I don't. So I'll get that one. Before um, or after your other yeah, two kids. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Before my kid, after my no, kid. Yeah, come on now. And uh, um, that's it. At the end of the day, you have to have that dedication, determination, desire to achieve. And you can't let anybody that. deter you. You're going to fall. You're going to fail. It's going to suck. You're going to have injuries, you know, and you have to learn how to, I'm going through that right now. A couple of my kids didn't get drafted that we were working really hard training wise. Um, college guys I'm working with trying to get to the, to the league and, uh, they didn't get drafted and they're really down. They're really, you know, strung out about it and, uh, they want to quit, you know, and I'm just like, if you, if you quit, it's never going to happen. Yep. You, if, if you, if you quit, nothing will ever happen. And that's the truth at the end of the day. And so you have to have that mentality of never quitting, you know? Um, and that's built through uh, facing all these struggles and, you know, continuing to get up at the end of the day. So what is your perspective on failure then? Um, failure? I, I don't know. I don't, my perspective on failure is uh, it doesn't exist in my life. You know, I mean, I guess in ways I've failed at certain things uh, personally. Um, I mean, failure is a personal. Well, while we're running a play, you fail, you fail, you fail, but you keep doing it. You keep, yeah. keep getting up and getting up and getting up. But yeah. that, yeah, that's not yeah. failure. That's just you ran, you had a bad play. Progressive you know? realization. Yeah, a, exactly. Yeah. I mean, if you believe in failure, then you're never going to succeed. So to you, the definition of failure is when you absolutely quit. Is when you, So failing, that's as long good. as you keep trying, you're succeeding. Once you stop, though, then mm-hmm. you're, you're a quitter. Yeah, well, and you failed. It. Once you, failed. you stop, you that's failed. That's failed, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and whether that's in business or marriage or what have you. I it, agree. You know, because everything's going to be a struggle. This life, that's what this life's about. It's about the struggle, about growing, about learning. And if you quit, then you fail. And and that's a tough pill to swallow, you know. I mean, I've, I've failed at uh, having the willpower in certain moments to really dig deep, uh, to have a better outcome. But I've, I don't think I've ever ever just quit and walked away. You know, I've always accepted an opportunity when given it, um, and milked it to as far as it can go. Yeah. And then you, it's t- at some point, you, I mean, when they hand you your box in the NFL and you get to work one day and they say, here, you're done. What's you're, a box? You're with all your stuff from your locker in it. And uh, there's a new guy in your locker. You show up to work one day and there's a new some guy, young, some young yeah, guy, there's yeah. some new guy there and they hand you a box with your stuff in it. And that's your last day in the NFL, you wow. know, and you walk out of the stadium in the snow and you go, Really? That's it. Like I wow. came here and, you know, made millions and lived this life and, you know, private jets and money and all this crap. And at the end, uh, they give you a box and you have to accept that and go, Hmm, am I learned from that box? Am I going to try now and take what I've learned and what's left in this box and what I was given on my way out, which is the things I just needed to succeed on the football field and kind of maybe reflect on that and go, that's really all that career was move on. Let's go to the next thing, you know, because at some point in life you have to understand reality, you know, there's failure and then there's reality. And if you understand reality and that you've, uh, you know, exhausted everything you can in this one thing and you've got to move on, you didn't quit. You just took your energy and all that, uh, that you have inside of you to, to succeed and channel it in another direction. They call it a pivot these days. Exactly. The next chapter. What about in that, vain relationships how important were relationships to you mentors and maybe friends from when you were younger that were trying to pull you back like did you ever have like a conscious realization like for me i realized that the people i went to high school with weren't actually rooting for me they were trying to kind of pull me back into that same old little town mindset Mm -hmm. that existed um 
I don't, I don't know, man. I just never listened to any of those people. <laughs> you know what I mean? I think you have to have a, a mindset to just block the world out. You know, if you've got a goal and you just go for it and see what happens and just throw it against the wall. Because, uh, I mean, I only played one year of high school football, so everybody told me I couldn't make it. I only went to San Diego State and I became a first round draft pick. Nobody believed I could do that. Nobody believed I could make it to start over a senior my freshman year, you know, because I came in as a defensive end and only weighed like 200. 120 pounds and you needed to be about 300 pounds to play offensive line and they switched my position and I said well I'm gonna get in the weight room and I got a year to do it and I made it and beat a senior out of his job and started for four years people say you can't be a first round draft pick you're San Diego State you're an offensive lineman you know blah 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 and I go no, I don't believe that. And I kept going, kept going. Went to the Senior Bowl, kicked the shit out of all the SEC guys. Uh, went to the, the Combine, one of the best Combine performances in history because I prepared. I went and I made sure that all those people were going to eat their words because I knew of the path and the path was dedication, determination, desire. And that lied within the weight room, that lied out on the track, that lied within my plate in front of me with what I ate. And that uh, lied in my bed when I slept at night and how I was getting enough rest, um, you know, and who I was uh, uh, consorting with friend-wise and, and otherwise, uh, from going to spring breaks and giving those up to, you know, a full dedication. If you want a dream, then you got to live a life that uh, people can't dream about. They don't understand it. That's, they don't, they can't correct. possibly yeah. fathom huh. living this life. Uh, and that's why they call it a dream. I never looked at it that way. I looked at when I got to San Diego State, Marshall Falk, um, and this little tiny guy from Louisiana is, I came in Marshall's last year and he's the first round draft pick and he's the second pick in the draft and like going to make millions of dollars and play in the NFL. I'm like, if he can do it, I can do it. So, so mindset, this is so critical. And this is what a lot of, I'll say young entrepreneurs out there really aren't understanding you really have to program your mind a certain way to be successful. And you just described exactly how to do that. They should, sure, as a blueprint, very carefully listen to that. Listen to the dedication he had in programming his mind the right way to, to, to lead him down the path of success. When people didn't believe right. in you being, you know, being able to achieve those things, you use it as fuel or do you ignore it? <laughs> Fuel for sure. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, when people doubt you, I mean, I remember my uncle saying, Kyle, you know, you should really go to school more and pick more of a major that's going to make sense in the real world. You know, this football thing is I'm like, <laughs> OK, whatever. <laughs> you know, I mean, people try to. Thanks, all the time. <laughs> yeah. I mean, my roommate in, in college, my freshman year. Kyle, you're never going to like, you'll, you need to just get settled in, be realistic. You're going to sit on the bench for the next three years. You'll get a chance. your top, you know, your junior, senior year to play. Uh, these guys are all seniors. They're never, you just switch positions. How could you become, you know, a starter in division one college football? Well, I know, but I know how to do it. If I go out there and fuck people up, then that's so, what's going to happen. Wait a minute, hang on. So, so when you when these people are saying yeah. this to you, what are you thinking when these people are saying that to you? Like, what are you really thinking people back to them? But you didn't say it, but you're thinking it. I again, I, I think you just have to have this innate ability to tune those people out. I never took one ounce of. I just was like, <laughs> Did you ever chuckle? Yeah, well, you that's why you laugh to yourself. That's why you're not playing. Yeah. That's why yeah. you're not succeeding. Yeah. Well, that's, that's the reason why you haven't uh, achieved anything. Yeah. It's hard because there's people who care about you. Thank you. So people are looking you straight in the face that you that you guys have some kind of relationship being like, nah, like they're not being fully supportive. Like, yeah, do it. Even though they might be like, well, you can't do it. They're still not supporting you. I don't know. I, that never, one, I don't, yeah. I don't like that part. Yeah. And I don't, I don't, uh, I don't think those kind of people truly care about you. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, the 100%. world, the world's out there. That's what I tell people. Nine to five is waiting for you every day. As long as you can walk, nine to five is there for you. Yeah. Uh, dreams have a window and you've got youth and vitality and uh, your mind. And when you can get your mind back and you can get back into your mode and you can start companies and you can do things, you have to take advantage of that. That's your moment. These are your opportunities. And if you listen to one person out there and think that they care about you more than they care about you living next to them in their situation, just the same because they fucking hate life and they 
they don't, you know, are struggling and they want to, you know, they want, they want, they want. I, I never wanted, I just go do it, you know? And I think that as an entrepreneur, that's the mentality and the mindset you have to have. You have to have that alpha, uh, no quit attitude that, uh, you know, uh, invigorates that tiger blood, you know, cause it's in your body. It's in everybody. If people just fail to, you know, believe, you know, I'm in entertainment, I'm a TV host and people are always like, Oh, well, why, how did you do that? I'm like, I have an imagination. I feel like if you have an imagination, you can, people say, Oh, I have dreams or this, but no, I have an imagination. I imagined that I could make this happen or I had the idea or the picture of myself doing it and then I do it and now it's like that imagination gets bigger and bigger and bigger mm -hmm. but it's an imagination same the way like people make movies you imagine something like oh I bet this could happen the scenario and then you put it on paper and you put it on the film it's just a step process but that that's a, that goes back to you, that you're a believer mm -hmm. you have a belief you believe in yourself yeah. and that's uh, at the end of the day the one thing you have to do for sure you better believe in yourself you wake up in the morning and doubt yourself then you might as well go back to bed. <laughs> Who instilled that in you? This be the believe in yourself. There was a, can you remember a moment yeah. when that happened or something happened, a shift? No, 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 man. No. I mean, I grew up, my dad was a truck driver and a farmer, yep. um, you know, so hard work, dedication, all that. I mean, I was seven years old. I could drive four pieces of farm equipment and, you know, operate machinery. That, yep. I mean, I can't believe I'm, I mean, I'm just barely getting my nine-year-old son on my lap to teach him to drive. And my dad used to throw me the keys and go change the water on the back property, you know, and um, uh, go drive the truck, you know, get in the 18 wheeler and, and you know, how to learn to drive a big, huge stick shift as, as a 10 year old. <laughs> you know, and move an 18 wheel uh, vehicle. Um, you know, so I grew up, I guess, with this work, work ethic. I think there's inherencies in that, but I guess I'm more so just very blessed and, and fortunate to be around positive people that believed in me enough that, um, um, you know, that they would instill and spend the time with me to uh, help nurture what they saw already inside of me, you know, mm -hmm. from all these coaches I had to my parents, to everybody else that just kind of saw this in me and, I, and, and just kind of helped me channel that in certain ways. Um, uh, it's just an innate ability, I guess, for most people that, that have this, this drive. Um, um, but again, I, I, it, it, it's just, I think, a mindset. You have to wake up one day and just say, "I'm, I'm going." You know, I mean, it's either you're you're in or you're out. You know, I mean, from when I grew up surfing with my friends, and you know, my buddies telling me, uh, "I'll be there," at, you know, five in the morning to pick you up. And I'm, you know, back then we didn't have cell phones or anything like that, and you're just waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting, and then they don't show up, and you're like, "Bro, what the hell?" And they're like, "You're never coming with me again. I'm never going to wait on you again." You know, and so. um don't wait on anybody. Don't, don't wait on anything, you know, when, cause these things are all going to continue to fail you, you know, believe in yourself and, um, uh, you can achieve anything, you know, this is not about, uh, there's faith involved. Uh, and that faith should be with that, uh, you know, you're a, uh, eternal being that you have this uh, power to exist. I mean, the human body radiates eight feet of energy outside of us. They measured. That's so, crazy. you know, uh, <laughs> what, what advice would you give about money? Especially because I've, oh, I've yeah, personally seen NFL yeah. players make a lot of money and then lose a lot of money. So what lessons have you learned about the mindset, the approach, and the use of money? Um, let's see. Money. Um, I mean, if I was going to tell a young guy coming in the league, I tell all the guys going in the league today that I have the opportunity to talk to uh, – Cause you're make, you just gone from making 700, $800 a month on a scholarship check to making millions. If you're one of those guys, um, you don't need to invest your money in anything. You should keep investing in yourself. Uh, people come after you for your money to invest it because they want your money. And, um, you've worked so hard. Uh, I think that, uh, uh, the NFL goes way out of their way to provide financial advisors for this. I remember I got in the NFL, uh, and, you know, I, uh, signed a $12 million contract out of college. I mean, I was broke. I was bouncing checks at the grocery store and all of a sudden I get drafted the first round. I get this $12 million contract and, um, uh, it gave me $6 million up front. And so automatically I got millions of dollars in the bank, but, 
because it's such a large amount, like you just think you need all these people around you, you know? And I remember being at practice one day and getting a phone call afterwards from my financial advisor during one of the economy fluxes, like, well, we're okay. And I heard all these guys in the locker room talking about money, they're losing money and blah, blah, blah. It was some, one of these crashes during Clinton's term. And I was just like, what? And I got this message from my financial guy and he's like, yeah, well, we've only lost a half a million and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, you know, fucking hard I work to make that. And you know how much I just gave out to my family and all this and that. And you know, and you, now I've been risking it on stocks and this and that and whatever shit I don't even know about. I'm like, I had no reason to do that. I was made, I was the investment. I should have just kept investing in myself, kept investing in things to where, uh, to, to the point of where then I understood life. Cause you don't understand life coming out of college. You don't understand business. You don't understand entrepreneurship and you shouldn't have to deal with that as a football player. Playing football, uh, in the national football league is a full time job. And so if you don't give that, that dedication, I spent way too much time. I owned a motorcycle company because choppers were huge and we could go and compete with Jesse James and the West Coast chopper guys and all the East Coast guys. And, you know, I was doing that at a bike company. I had this company, I had that company. And then I had a real estate company and the real estate economy crashes all of a sudden. And you're just like, what? And you just make it out with what you got put in it at the end of the day. I mean, <laughs> the where money is to be made is in yourself and entrepreneurship and finding your your routes uh, to where it's 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 your thing this is you um too many guys use their money get distracted by uh this investment car my buddy's losing money on car dealerships and all these other things and sure you can make a bu bunch of money you can buy a bunch of mcdonald's and make a bunch of money but all those things cost money and at the end of the day when you're playing football you're making more money than any investment could possibly make you I mean, the amount of money you're making playing football, if you're at that elite level, uh, there's no reason for those guys to invest in anything. And I wish I never would have, honestly. I wish I just put everything in the bank and sat on it, waited till I was done, married kids, settled. Now let's use this money. I know what to do. NFL aside, because you're, um, that was a chapter, but you're an entrepreneur and you have a lot of wisdom and knowledge. The thing that Mike and I get a lot from younger kids is, well, yeah, but you already have money. And it's like, well, we started off, we didn't have money. You started off, you said you were bouncing checks. Um, big NFL contract aside, is there anything you would tell a kid that's sleeping on his mom's couch that's watching an infomercial or something? And it's like Mike was saying is looking for this, you know, miracle win the lottery button that is the miracle pill instead of like digging down and just taking one step at a time and you know, yeah. organically adding value to society and then the money starts to kind of come. What um, approach to money or that would you give advice? I mean, if you're sitting on the couch, then you're already behind. <laughs> That's the advice. There you go. You, know, like you got to get, get up. Couch. You got to get up and get going. Go, you got to, the money's out there. Go get it. You know, it's not on your couch. You know, there's maybe enough there to feed you the way you'll be fed the rest of your life if you continue that attitude. You know, and that's a, uh, the dollar menu. Yeah. I always, I always ask the question. I'm like, well, what have you done? Yeah. 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 Well, and they look at you blank and like, well, just do something. Yeah. <laughs> Anything. Yeah. I mean, move. I, you should. I mean, if, uh, if you don't have an idea of what to do, just go out into the world and there's a million things that are going to face you and God's going to see you towards that. In my opinion, you know, there's a spiritual aspect to this, very cosmic, um, especially with all this stuff, with the cannabis. Um, um, and I, and I think that that relates to success and entrepreneurship. Uh, you, you have a connection to a greater power. That's my belief. And that can help you in your quest and what your purpose is here to do, whether that's good or evil, you need to channel that. Okay. Because you are someone that has an unbelievable amount of ability to channel power. Power. We are we are unbelievable power conduits that can that can source all this power from out in this universe, and you can direct it, and that universe will help you on your way. Uh, how, how do they tune into the into that power authenticity thing? Like, how did you channel it? Uh, again, I think it just goes back to uh, the universe helps those that help themselves. 
Um, and uh, if you get off your ass and go help yourself, then the universe is going to start lining up for you. You're going to see it. You know, you walk a road and, and there's a path. OK, uh, again, especially here in America, you have roads everywhere, a million roads to take. And um, if you're not out walking, then you're never going to find one. You know, what you put out is what you get back. I feel like a lot of people mm-hmm. in this city move here and they're like, oh, I hate all it. Oh, it's so this. It's so that. It's like, but that's what you're putting out. That's what you're going to get back. I did this thing when I first moved here where I would wake up every morning and say, I love you, LA. I would just put it out there because I, it's true. I did. (laughs) That's cool. I didn't like show tune or anything. I love you. LA. No, I didn't do that, but I should have. Going down. (laughs) You have to to tell, I understand. You have to tell yourself that every day when you live here. (laughs) No, but it's true. And I feel like me feeling positive and actually putting that out there, it, it boomeranged it back. But I feel mm-hmm. like if I complained about traffic and the people and not getting this opportunity and this and that and this, that's just what I'm going to get back. That's the boomerang that I'm putting out there. So I just shifted that and I feel like it worked. Can I ask you a question? Where can people find your neuro XPF? Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> 130 online. calorie yeah. gummies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, online, neuroxpf.com. Um, extreme performance fuel. Uh, can I say it? Can, saying, I, yeah. can I TV host it? There you go. Yeah, I do our Ooh. infomercial. Neuro XPF. Extreme performance fuel. <laughs> <laughs> it's a mouthful. That's a tongue twister. That extreme performance fuel. Yeah. Like we, Big Mike's blends. It's all... We were originally Neuro Armor, and then we sold too much product, and Under Armour sued us. Um, we could have won, they said, but it would have cost us a million bucks. So I just put the XPF behind it. The Neuro side is is why I created this brand, and we're creating an entire sports line of products um, uh, to give athletes an opportunity from the youth level up to the pro level. Uh, zero THC. We work with dedicated farms that extract all THC out, so you're not going to test positive for THC because some CBDs uh, you can test positive. Uh, that 15 nanogram, if you're a, a federal worker, that you're still at the 15 nanogram testing. Uh, if you're taking a CBD product right now that cannot guarantee zero THC, then you're risking um, popping positive on a drug test. It happened to my father, actually, and we did a test on him. He retired a police chief and um, decided, I'm going to go back to trucking because he's losing his mind. And I got him on CBD because it retired as a police chief uh, up in Washington State. Uh, he became a cop later on down the road and obviously... It became successful at that, but he always stayed trucking. These, you know, truckers are truckers. And, uh, um, he tested positive on a drug test, uh, and didn't get his job back, uh, trucking. Um, and I told him, don't take it at least just like 24 hours. He's like, it worked so good. It worked so good. I couldn't, I had to take it. Otherwise I wouldn't have passed the test because they make you do this physical portion of oh. going around the truck and hooking everything up oh, and wow. doing all these things. And, uh, and he's like, I, I just, I knew I couldn't do it without it. And I was like, well, well, uh, well, there you go. He, and now he's back trucking and he's begging me for CBD. You love <laughs> saying hilarious. trucking. Yeah. You get all excited trucking. <laughs> I love trucking, man. Do you love feel it? it? Yeah. Good. Oh, well, I smoked. The, give him a, give him a <laughs> Yeah. What's your yeah. diagnosis? How well, do you no, feel? It, it, oh, yeah. It chills you. That's what it's supposed to do. Yeah. It's a mellow. You can't just tell. Yeah. Mike's a bad um, guinea pig. He's a great guinea pig. No, he's, uh, he's that's the truth. Of it. On you. You, you're not, <laughs> when you use CBD, you're not going to notice. Uh, this anything special like right. other than a situation you're going to find yourself in a, at the, in a situation Cold. at the end of the day yeah. and realize oh. i went through this that and the other and i know i would have lost my shit if yeah. i right. and i was like the only thing i could think of that i did different that day was take cbd there is a level of thc everybody carries in their body to enact a, and ignite that entourage effect oh. um that's, that's and uh, i did not know that yeah everybody carries that's why testing starts at 15.2 nanograms of thc because every person we, a we make a form of THC, THC. called anandamide. That's right. It, uh, when so you sexy when Mike starts talking and, like this. Tell us about anandamide. the terpenes. <laughs> anandamide the terpenes. Is, means, in right. Sanskrit, it means bliss. So yeah. it is the bliss molecule. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Where do the terpenes figure. work in? Terpenes. Well, that will guide oh. the terpenes, effect. Terpenes. That's a whole other level. We that actually is. do a Mike great can talk about that terpenes. stuff. Yeah. Like, we add terpenes to our product. Uh, we've got a great excellent. manufacturer. Added and terpenes in all of our there you products. Go. Do you, you add terpenes to Mike's blends? Uh, there is a terpene. Yeah, we we very closely monitor our terpene and blood you, profiles. Where do you rape the terpenes from? Well, to put them. What in. a word! <laughs> from, Hashtag time's where are you up. Terpenes. Them from? <laughs> the, ones, the ones that I use are cannabis derived. Mm. But you can also get naturally derived. There's no. Are actually, there terpenes no in chicken? 
I don't know. It's a good question. Well, thank you for coming on. We really appreciate Thanks, it. Kyle. Thank Thanks, Kyle. Thanks, Kyle. You're here. great. This is yeah, a great thank show. You for thank you. Me. I really love, appreciate it. Everybody go to his yeah. website. Give him love. Support yep. him. He has tons of products CBD. coming, right? Protein and other stuff you're working yeah, on? Yeah, full sports line. Yep. Full sports line of uh, supplements. Uh, these are just a few of our products. We have, I think, nine or ten right now, and we've got a lot more coming. So, Are you on Instagram or Facebook uh, or Twitter? Instagram. Plug it. Kyle Turley. Yep. Just T-U-R-L-E-Y. Like turkey with an L. There you go. (laughs) That's the misspelling all the time on everything. Turkey. (laughs) And then we have a website. Business (laughs) Outlaws. Is this a test? (laughs) I just wanted somebody else besides me to say it. You guys like shouted it at me like scary. Let's Let's try this again. We also have a website. (laughs) Businessoutlaws.com. <laughs> you guys sounded so eight. Businessoutlaws.com. Businessoutlaws.com. Yeah. We wanted you to hear it in stereo. Yeah. All right. Uh, Kyle, thank you for being here. Aptly named. Yeah. And you, you uh, have to be an outlaw to yeah. be in business. Period. There you go. Well, I've been wanting to do that all day. I've been wanting to do that all day. All right. Big Mike, Chris Collins, Jamie Foxx, we're out. Cool. Right. See you. Okay.